Let's subtract fractions. Now, if you like to add fractions, and then, well, subtracting fractions shouldn't be so bad. The key here is we have to have common denominators, which means the bottom number must be the same. That is the key. Uh, so adding and subtracting fractions must have common denominators. Therefore, we might have to create equivalent fractions. The reason, right, if, oops, if we are subtracting fractions, we're talking about the denominator, the bottom number. So think about if you have pizza and you have two pizzas or whatever, they have the same amount, you're subtracting or you're eating the pieces. If you don't have the same bottom numbers, it's like comparing apples to oranges. You might hear people say that a lot. So we have to have the denominators the same so that we can compare apples to apples or oranges to oranges. So let's do this. Now, when we have a subtraction of fraction problems, hopefully you recognize right away of, hey, look, my denominators match. If they match, then you're ready to roll. So I always say, okay, denominators match. My denominator is nine. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, denominator stays the same. We just carry it over. Now we subtract eight minus two is six. Now, hopefully you say, well, six over nine, that can be reduced. You are correct, because 6 and 9 share a common factor of 3. So we can divide a 3 out of both the top and the bottom. If you are a visual learner, I highly recommend you write all of this down, because you will be less likely to miss a step if you're writing all of this down. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So our reduced fraction is 2 thirds. Let's subtract 6 sevenths minus 4 sevenths. Again, I see my denominator is the same, so my 7 holds strong. And then I'm looking at the top. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 and 7 share no common factors, so my answer is simply 2 sevenths. Now let's get into some problems where our denominators do not match. So I have 7 eighths minus 3 fifths. Obviously, those are not the same. So I need to find a number that 8 and 5 go into evenly. And if you struggle and you can't think about it, then just multiply those together. Because 8 times 5 is 40, so I know both of these numbers will go into 40. So I'm subtracting, and now I'm going to create equivalent fractions. So on the left side, 8 times 5. Think about your denominator. 8 times 5 gives me 40. So that means I have to multiply that numerator also by 5, because math is about equality. And we're making an equivalent fraction. So 7 times 5 is 35. On the right side, 5 times 8 is 40, so 3 times 8 is 24. Now, once I have my equivalent fractions, you can see in my new problem, my denominator... Now they're the same, and they're 40. So 40 stays the same, and now I subtract. 35 minus 24, which gives me 11. 11 and 40 share no common factors, so that is my final answer. 9 tenths minus 3 fourths. Now if you do the multiplication trick of 10 times 4 gives me uh, 40, That'll work. You will get the right answer, but you will have to reduce at the end. Uh, just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you might say, well, 10 and 4, they both go into 20. And you would be right. So if I do use 20, well, 10 times 2 is 20. And 9 times 2 is 18. And on the right side, 4 times 5 is 20. So 3 times 5 is 15. It really, really helps if you have your multiplication facts memorized. That makes all of this a lot easier to create the equivalent fractions, to find the common denominators, all of those things. So now I have a common denominator of 20, and 18 minus 15 is 3. So my final answer is 3 twentieths. Let's do one more, 5 sixths minus 5 eighteenths. And here you might see, well, hey, 6 and 18, well, 6 times 3 gives me 18. You are right. That means my common denominator is 18. So on the left side, again, 6 times 3 is 18. So I multiply the numerator by 3, and 5 times 3 is 15. And on the right side, I didn't change 18, right? That's the same as multiplying by 1. So that means my numerator is being multiplied by 1. So when I subtract, my denominator stays the same, and 15 minus 5 
is 10. Now, hopefully, you say, well, 10 and 18, those are both even. They're reducible by 2, and you'd be right. So we will divide both the top and the bottom number by 2 to reduce our fraction. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. Final answer. If, again, if you are a visual learner, it is super important to write all of these things down, or if you're just getting started. Because when you write all of these little numbers down of tips and tricks of what you're doing, your brain is following the steps. If you try to do it all in your head, I'm not saying you can't, um, it's just more likely to make a mistake or to forget to multiply a certain number um, because you might think you've already done it. So by writing things down, uh, it really just helps solidify your steps so that you don't forget anything.